it's that positive reinforcement that they constantly give you and like it it's like uplifting and like when they smile you smile even if like you're having a bad day actions speak louder than their words when students walk through those front doors showing everybody the same amount of love that you would show the next person I just feel like it's listening to them, it's taking quiet time with them at recess or at a quiet time in the classroom where I can just sit with them and build their trust. This year it took almost eight months for at least two of the boys in my classroom and I was feeling like in May, well now I can start to teach them. <laughs> you know, it can feel a little bit discouraging. Luckily, I'm teaching a fourth, fifth this year, and so I do have to look forward to having that relationship already in place. The positive outcome is, I, you know, when you get to that point, they buy in a little more to learning. Last year I had a student, and he would just say, I hate you, go away, um, get away from me. And he did that every day. I knew that he had a really good relationship with the past IA, and I knew I couldn't start off where she left because we had to build our relationship. If he did say something that was inappropriate, I didn't take it personal. I knew that that was just his way of um, showing that he was unhappy. And when I got to know him, I said, well, what do you think you're going to do in 2028? He goes, I'm going to be done with college. And I said, wow, because I had started with this student. And he always talked about, like, I don't want to come to school and go from that point to him having an idea about his future. That made my year. <laughs> oh my god, my coordinator. Um, without him, honestly, I don't think I would be where I am right now. Because um, when I was starting, I had no credit whatsoever. And um, even he saw it as a challenge for me to graduate. But with his persistence and his just the showing that he actually cared and like asking me to meet with him weekly and um, also communicating with my mother about how my progress progress was and like like how I've been really growing throughout the year really helped with um, wanting to stay on track and um, helping me graduate. Students, they say they don't want us in their business, but I know that they appreciate us in their business. And I know they say they don't want their parents involved, but when they know that we've developed strong relationships with their parents and have them on speed dial, and it's more about a relationship and a conversation, the dynamics in terms of student and admin or student and teacher interaction increases. And I always say to all of our staff, take the time to get to know the students as individuals. That starts with one, greeting them every day and saying hi, letting them know you see them, um, going to their extracurricular activities and showing them that you care about what they do outside of school. One of my favorite teachers is that they play basketball with me. Fridays at lunch I meet with two of my English teachers and we read poetry and talk about it. So one of the ways he developed that relationship was by going to my play and really being present and being just really happy for me. So we sort of have created a school with a wraparound service model to provide supports in a wraparound way, not just for the student, but for the family. Our goal is to learn as much as we can about the student and the family, their culture, um, their country situation, to, in order to support and transition them into our school setting. In the last two years, we've actually done parenting groups. So the parents come in there and we a variety of topics. So once they start saying how they feel or some of the things that are troubling them, I say, I can help you. And uh, if you know, trust me long enough to let you know that I can help you. It might not always happen tomorrow. It's going to happen. And if you have a problem, trust me enough to let you know that I will help you. And the only thing I need you to do is come and be supportive. We need to make sure parents are feeling um, comfortable one of the professional developments that took place in our school was about trauma. Something I've learned is that it's really important that a school knows that sometimes a student might be having negative reactions to school because their parents had a very bad experience. So from start, we need to talk to our parents with respect.
the communication has to be open and it has to be consistent. So I would love a phone call about my son doing something great. If something's wrong, I would love for him to be talked to about it because he'll be able to learn from that situation. I also would like for them to have high expectations. So um, that's with academic, that's socially, that's just a life skill they will need. I would like to know they are on the same path as me, or on the same level as me as holding them accountable and knowing that he can get that work done, believing in my child, pushing them to their furthest extent. She doesn't know that. I always tell the parents, I'm going to be there. The school will be there. The school should treat the babies here like we would treat our own. The school is just an extended family. Young adults often feel like their story is so bad that they can't possibly feel sharing it with somebody else would be safe. And so when you have the opportunity to develop trusting relationships with students and um, let them know that we have the right people in our schools, students feel way more supported. You have to have the good intentions. You have to be trustworthy. If you can prove to me um, that, you, that I can trust you, then we can have a relationship. It's all about being trustworthy. If you've been homeless, you've witnessed domestic violence, whatever territories you have to cross to get here, but I want to guarantee you when you're here, we're going to keep you safe and get you a quality education, period. That's it.